Are you from the perfect factory? Ugh. Today I'm reacting to Anne Boleyn's new Q&A video. Let's get into it. Welcome to a new video. So today we're gonna do a Q&A. So I went on to Instagram, which is where I always have you guys ask me questions because I notice that people are more willing to ask a variety of questions when it's like private versus like, if I go on YouTube on my community post and say, ask questions, people will purposely ask like the harshest questions they could think of. And it's just all about who can come up with the meanest thing. And I'm just not really about that competition. I am though, not gonna lie. <laughs> Let's do it. Are you still doing cameos? Yes, yes I am. That's also something else you can find down in the description box. I will do a cameo for literally anything besides roasting people. I can only roast people that I know and where we have that level of like roasting friendship or relationship. I can't roast people I don't know. So that's like the only one I can't do. But besides that, I will do any cameo request. I'm pretty sure there was a girl who ordered a cameo from Amber and she never recorded anything for her and she never got a video. I'm pretty sure she never got her money back either. Amber then blamed it on like being in like a bad mental health state type deal and that's why she couldn't do it. Which reminded me of the um, that special website that is for um, you know like spicy content for people who are fans. I actually can't believe Amber had one and then People paid all this money and then got no content for it. How are your kidney stone symptoms going? So I know not everyone watches every single one of my videos. I find it strange as well that she even chose this question to answer. Like out of all the possibly interesting questions, we get how are your kidney stones going? Like, what the fuck? Also, I'm pretty sure she's writing these questions herself. Because she definitely doesn't need to answer this question. But I feel like she loves having some type of victim situation with some type of mental or physical illness. She like kind of gets something out of it, like collecting these weird illnesses. Like it's so weird. Anyway, trigger warning coming up for just gross. Just a little backstory. I had a little bit of blood in my urine. I was tested for a UTI three times and it would come back negative each time. I also started to have a little bit of pelvis pain, a little bit of flank pain, and I ended up getting a CT scan and it turns out I have a six millimeter kidney stone that is not obstructing, so it's not moving. It's literally just chilling inside of my kidney. I actually have not had blood in my urine in a while, so that is a good thing. But when I do a lot of like moving and stuff, I do still have a little bit of pain. And that's normal uh, when you have a kidney stone. If you're doing a lot of moving, you're gonna move it around a little bit and you're gonna feel uncomfortable. So that is currently what I'm dealing with. I do still have my urologist appointment scheduled and ready to go. If you guys remember, that was scheduled for November and I'm not able to get anything sooner. I've tried. Who was someone you miss and wish was still in your life? Honestly, I miss my friend Alexis. I miss the friendship we used to have and I miss the person that I thought she was, but I missed the Alexis before the betrayal. Why do you keep calling your girlfriend Tommy? So I'm calling my girlfriend Tommy because that is what she prefers to be called. So it's out of respect. Why did she have to say it like that? As if she really deserves respect anyway, let's be real. Who are you voting for? So this is actually gonna be the first year that I vote and I'm voting for Kamala Harris and I am literally so ecstatic. If she becomes our president, I will be bawling my eyes out. Like I genuinely love like what she stands for. Obviously no president will ever be perfect. And I know politics, look at that cutie. I know politics isn't thoroughly something that I really wanna talk about on my channel, but I genuinely love her and I support her and I would love for her to be my president. And you don't have to agree with me. It's totally fine. Everyone can have different opinions on politics without like fighting in the comments please let's just calm down have you and tommy considered having a third in your relationship no she's too jealous i'm too jealous we're definitely monogamous people neither of us want to share each other at all well duh obviously she's trying to isolate you so of course she wants you to be monogamous people say they don't like you because you're a bad person but they make fun of your weight and body why do you think that is those people they don't dislike me because i'm a bad person they dislike me because I'm a big person and I'm an easy target. I mean, the sky is blue. Of course you're an easy target. You're ginormous. 
Also, it's not because you're ginormous, it's because you're an awful person. The things that are said about you would never be said about someone like Hungry Fat Chick, because she's really sweet. But you're trash, so that's why people don't like you. You just happen to also be huge. When are you going to publish a book? So if you guys don't know, I've been wanting to publish a guided journal and a poetry book because I used to love writing poetry, but I'm telling you guys, I haven't really been writing poetry. It's kind of like left my body. I used to be super passionate about it, but I'm still journaling every single day. I love journaling. I love guided journals. So I still would love to be able to create a guided journal for you guys. I think that would be so freaking fun. It's just like the steps to doing so. I am a little confused by it, I'm not gonna lie. But I really do wanna make it happen because I know how many of you would love a guided journal by Amberlynn Reed because I am journaling over here. The sad thing is if she wasn't a terrible person, that'd be a really good idea. However, she simultaneously does nothing and has no time. Like, what do you mean you don't know the first steps? Like, look into it. What else are you doing with your day? apart from eating and talking to your girlfriend. Actually accomplish something. I actually feel bad for people who are somehow a fan. Like believing the lies, thinking that she actually cares about losing weight when she loves her lifestyle. And why would she change if she doesn't have to? She's being loved for exactly how she is. And the girlfriend wants her to continue her lifestyle and actually be even worse. But apart from that, Oh my god, if she did a poetry book, I would pre-order that shit and do a review. It would be so incredible. I just know it. I just don't know which one would be worse, hers or Gabby Hanna's. When you go back to therapy, will you share that journey with us? I think a lot of us would love that. I am sure that when I start therapy, I will definitely tell you guys about it. I remember last time I did like intensive therapy. I came on here and I would share that with you guys and I got really open and a lot of people hated that which i thought was weird because it was also very highly requested it's just a really good example that like no matter what i do it's always like the wrong thing and the wrong option sometimes i'm oblivious but when i start to notice that every time she talks it goes up like this and it's so annoying i literally can't handle it also that is not an example you idiot that's just multiple people having multiple different opinions. It's not like someone's asking you to do it and then they're changing their mind. It's different people. Like, you're so dumb. So I'm just gonna do me and however I feel in the moment is probably what I will do. And a lot of people think that I'm super indecisive, which I definitely am a very indecisive person. I change my mind a lot. And I think a really big reason for that as well is because I get so many different like conflicting opinions. So then I try to take those into consideration and then it makes me more indecisive. So it's like, what the heck? So that's why a lot of the time I'm kind of just like go with the flow and it's however I'm feeling at the moment is what I will do. I feel like she does the same for her health, weight, and fitness. She just goes with the flow. Like, she'll be on, like, the brink of death, and she's like, mm, I kind of feel like orange chicken. Do you trust Tommy? I know that you have trust issues with people. I never fully trust anybody. That is just how it's always been for me. I fully believe that you earn someone's trust. You don't just trust someone right off the bat and hope they don't break that. I have been through a lot in my life and in my childhood, I learned very early that you cannot trust people. And I learned that at a very young age that most people shouldn't have to like experience that. But I do feel like everything I've been through has made me stronger. And when I tell you she talks so much shit, was your past so traumatizing that you can never trust anyone again? Or did you, you know, heal yourself and now you're stronger than ever? Like, which it one has it? made me realize that like you can't fully trust people, but I trust Tommy more than I have trusted anybody probably my whole life. And that feeling has come natural. It hasn't even like been something that like I've had to work on fully. Of course, I've had to work on my trust with literally everyone, including Tommy, but like the level of where I do trust her, that has come natural for me and it has actually shocked me. Yeah, it's shocked all of us as well. <laughs> like, the fact that you trust this person 
knowing their history is actually really concerning. I'm wondering how things are going to develop from here. Are you doing Vlogmas this year? Honestly, I have no earthly idea. I go back and forth. It was a strong no. And then I was like, you know what, let's do it. And now I'm currently at like, I don't know. Where'd the nickname Ambi come from? So it originated when I was just a little girl. I'm talking like a baby. My, both my parents would call me Ambies and my mom would call me Ambi here and there. And then I've had two people in my life call me Ambi just like naturally by themselves. My ex Feline and then my ex best friend Alexis. And I've realized I actually low key love that. I love the nickname so much that I made it my Instagram and I'm kind of feeling it. Like Amberlynn who? So I've also noticed that a lot of people are calling me Ambi now and I love it low key. I think it's super adorable. Like it comes from literally just when I was like knee high to a grass hapa. What was that? <laughs> Dude, when I tell you, I don't know what is worse. Her sense of humor or her putting in zero effort. Like, which is worse? What is your current obsession? Well, besides my girlfriend, <laughs> the song Good Luck Babe by Chapel Roan, I cannot stop. I literally cannot stop listening to it. It's kind of sick. It's kind of gross. It's kind of disgusting. Like I'm obsessed. Like I love the meaning behind it. And like, I love how she sounds. I just love everything. Like it is the most perfect song. I'm obsessed. Have you fully forgave your mother for her actions while she was deep in her addiction? Yes, I have. Do those things still hurt me sometimes? Yes, but you can forgive and you can heal and you can still be a human with feelings and emotions. That's completely normal. I'm not a robot, but it's like, I think it's time to move on. Like I'm 33 years old. My mom and I still have those deep discussions sometimes about the past, but I've always loved my mom unconditionally and sometimes to a fault, I'm not gonna lie. So now that she's almost nine years sober and she has completely transformed her life and we have a relationship together, like if I didn't fully forgive her, it would only be hurting the both of us. It is so frustrating when she like pretends to be like deep. Like, it will only affect the both of us. Like, we both know you will drop your mom in one second if Tommy told you to. Is Tommy moving to Oklahoma? No, she isn't. I know a lot of people are assuming that, but nope, she's not. This is classic narcissistic behavior. I can almost guarantee they're going to be living together in a couple of weeks. The only difference will be like... Instead of her moving in, they'll like move into a new place together or Amber will move in with her. Like they're going to be living together, which is basically what the question's asking. She's just annoying. It will be like if you said, did you call someone? And they'll be like, no, but they like FaceTimed. And you'd be like, oh, did you FaceTime? And they're like, yeah. But it's like, bitch, you fucking called them. Don't be annoying. And just answer the question. Don't be a stickler. Do you think the sun is real? Because it is so bright, it doesn't even make sense. I'm sorry, but this question genuinely made me LOL when I first read it. Because you guys, like, hate conspiracy Lynn. Which I understand. I just like to think outside of the box sometimes, you know? And I'm a firm believer that, like, just because you're taught something in school and you're told something doesn't mean it's real. And I know that's hectic to a lot of people, that's fine. But like the moon landing did not happen. Like I firmly feel that like inside of my soul. So it's fun to also be like, hmm, what else isn't true? Do I think the sun is real? Yes, because we see it, we feel it. But do I think that every single thing that they have told us about it is 100% accurate? No. No, I don't. Her trying to be funny is so obnoxious. It's like actually infuriating. Having different opinions is actually cool. Like it's fine. She just says shit to piss people off or like to be quirky. But there's no like nuance or thought behind it. What's your go-to cocktail when you're with Tommy? And is that the reason why you're drinking again? So first of all, no, Tommy isn't a drinker. I think we just drink socially. We just have a couple drinks together because it's fun. We like to go to the bar, listen to music, hang out. But my go-to for some reason is sex on the beach. And I'm drawing a blank of what she always orders. Oh my gosh. Is it a Long Island? Oh no. I literally do not remember, but I do know that I've also ordered it and it tastes really good. I'm not remembering what it's called. When did you and Tommy make it official? So this is gonna be off the chain. 
to some of y'all, but she first messaged me on June 18th and we became official on June 26th. Literally like eight days later, we became official. When you know, you know, what can I say? Yeah, when um, your feeder girlfriend's fiance dies from her being overfed by your current girlfriend and you're the replacement. I mean, that's true love right there. When you know, you know. Have you been reading lately? No, I haven't. I'm still in such a reading slump, but I really, really want to choose a book off of my bookshelf and just like open it up. Just read the freaking first page, Amber Lynn. I'd actually pay money to like, like imagine The Sims, but Amber Lynn is your Sim and you just leave it on free will and you just see how they live out their day. Like, I want to see what she does all day apart from talking to tommy and eating because i know she's not showering she's, she's not walking the dog she doesn't have a job i just wonder what she's doing all day what's your ideal engagement ring look like so if i can find any photos just like online or whatever i'll plop them up right here but i really want like something that isn't the norm i really like the color black so I think like a black diamond or a black stone of some sort would be a, a big yes for me. Genuinely, like at my core, I feel like that's so me. The only thing worse than hectic is the insufferable, over-exaggerated, genuine. Would you get a tattoo with Tommy? Yeah, I would. It would be my first tattoo, but yeah, I would totally do that. How are you doing with regulating your emotions? Because I know that's something you were working on. I'm not perfect. I'm definitely getting better. I'm learning more like what my triggers are. And I have created like journaling prompts specifically for moments where I need to regulate myself or become more rational. Like I said before, like I know a lot of you don't watch every single one of my videos, but if you don't know, I do have BPD. So that makes it really hard sometimes for me to regulate my emotions. And something else that like I have come to terms with is like, I have zero emotional permanence, which honestly makes things even harder. And that's probably like one of my biggest triggers I've realized recently. So I noticed by like creating these journal prompts, whenever I feel like triggered or like, I like to call it like BPD moments or BPD freakouts for the lack of a better term. Whenever I'm about to have that, I go straight to those journal prompts. And this is something new that I've recently started because it's like being with Tommy, it's like I've never wanted to improve so much with my BPD like until now. Like she genuinely makes me want to be a better person. She said the exact same thing about Feline and Beck and Destiny. <laughs> like... It's the same old tired story. And I have felt that in our relationships. I feel like that's like th that's important to feel when you're in a relationship. Like I hope the person that you're with makes you want to become a better person. But it's like the fact that I am like actually actively not only just like wanting to become a better person, but I'm like taking the steps to do so. Like that just like, I don't know, it makes my heart feel nice and warm and fuzzy. So anyways, these journal prompts have actually helped me. I have stepped away from journaling after doing these prompts. And I'm like, wow, I feel lighter. Emotionally, not physically. At least if salami is still in the picture. I feel better. I'm no longer freaking out. And I am now finally able to be rational and aware. I know there's actually a lot of people who also suffer with BPD who is watching me or people who probably just have issues regulating themselves, et cetera, et cetera. So if you guys are interested in seeing the prompts and like kind of the process that I go through during a moment like that, I would honestly love nothing more than to share that with you guys because I really do think that it could be helpful. And before anyone says anything, yes, I need to go to therapy. I understand I'm not a therapist. I'm not giving advice. I'm strictly just like showing something that helps me that I feel like could help you. I may be wrong, but this just sounds like complete shit. Like, she always goes on these weird long like tangents when she's just started a relationship. Like, I have all these like healthy ways of dealing with my BPD and my lymphedema. Okay, maybe not the lymphedema, but you know what I'm saying. Like, the love has healed her trauma and she's never been so happy and everything's going up and she's gonna lose weight. I don't think anything's going to change and I think this is going to be one of the relationships where it actually is worse. Like 
probably the worst relationship she'll have. Will you ever do mukbangs again? I have flirted with the idea, I'm not gonna lie. When, there are times where I don't wanna vlog. There are times where I don't wanna show what is going on in my personal life. But I do have a job I have to do, and that's creating content. So my brain does go to, maybe I should just throw up a mukbang. So I'm not gonna lie. That is uh, thoughts that I've had for a while now, maybe since like February or March. So the fact that I have not done one, I'm very proud of that. When she says that she's proud of herself for something that you definitely should not be proud of, it is so aggravating. Also, how pathetic after 10 years, the only two types of content you can think of is oversharing and overeating. Because mukbangs are easy. They're easy to do. They're easy to film. You're going to eat anyways. Throw it up and call today. Make some money. Are you interested in buying property? I would love to buy a house one day, but that's such like a big commitment. And it's like, you guys have seen, I have not like stayed in one state. I have moved around so much. I have lived in so many different states. And it's like, where would I buy the house? Am I going to be in that state forever? Like, it's just like such a huge commitment. Plus I'm like super picky. The house would have to be like my idea of perfect because it's like, it's mine, I own it. But the thought of like owning my own house, it'd be like my little baby and I could do whatever I want to it. Like that's pretty exciting. So it's up in the air. I don't really know at this moment. She has fumbled the bag so hard. The fact that she doesn't have a house or she doesn't really have any like financial accomplishments and she probably over the past 10 years has earned over a million dollars as well. What is your biggest regret from each of your relationships? Definitely having undiagnosed BPD and definitely not understanding the reason why I was the way the I was. The amount of times she has brought this up is astronomical and the fact that she still hasn't learned that like because every time she gets in a relationship She's like, oh my god, we're in love and I'm healed. And then things go bad and she's like, oh, it's my BPD. And she's done that in every single relationship. It's like, maybe stay single for a bit, go to therapy, and then get into a relationship and actually stop abusing people. Was not getting help sooner. It takes two to tango in most relationships, but like... I am fully aware and taking accountability of like, it was probably hard being in a relationship with me in the past because I had a lot, a lot of baggage, a lot of heaviness. I'm not gonna say anything. And undiagnosed BPD, it's scary, it's overwhelming, it's consuming. Annoying, exhausting, and no matter how awful it is, you're still not going to go to therapy, even if not for yourself, for the people that you surround yourself with. Well, the one person, because you have no friends. And it's not just for the person experiencing it, but it's also for the people around them. And it's like, I have a lot of regret towards that, like a hundred million thousand percent. And I would do anything to like be able to go back in time because I genuinely think it would have prevented 99% of my problems that were caused by me. Then go to therapy. How do you cope with a long distance relationship? It's hard, but we do make a lot of time for each other and I'm very grateful for that. Like Tommy puts as much energy in me as I put in her. And I feel like that's super freaking important because I know how it feels to be you know, in a relationship with someone or like in a situationship with someone where it's like, you're putting all this energy and all this time and this attention into them. And it's like, they're not giving it back. It's awkward. It's painful. It's like, do they even like me? Like what? When two energies are just like so similar, just like what you want in a relationship and like what you give in a relationship and like the give and take is like very balanced. I think it makes any relationship just a lot easier, whether it's long distance or not. How many pets have you had as an adult so far? I've had four, Wasabi, Twinkie, Rarity, and Jax. And unfortunately, Jax passed away. If you guys remember Jax, then you have definitely been around for a long time. Um, I think about him all the time and I miss him dearly. What's something you really wanna do with Tommy? I would love to like go on a vacation with her. Maybe like a little cabin, 
like a cabin in the mountains or something that sounds like cute but it's fresh it low-key just sounds so cozy like i could do anything with her and have the time of my life that is something me and her like agree on like we could literally just be sitting next to each other and it's the best time we've ever had like ever in our life as long as food is involved will you be visiting tommy or is that off the table hmm i don't really know oh my god the amount that i hated that is indescribable the cringe is severe and this is exactly what i meant before when i said if you ask a question like i oh, was tommy moving in and she says no insinuating they're not going to be living together when clearly she's planning on moving in with tommy it's just the other way around God, she's so predictable and annoying. What's one thing you notice about Tommy that made you realize you were in love? Y'all, there are thousands of things that made me realize this. Not gonna lie to you. So I'm just gonna like go on my little list of reasons and randomly pick one. It's the way that she cares about me. If I had a bit of extra time, I would go back to every previous relationship announcement video and clip the part where she says that exact sentence. The way that like, if I just have like, oh i have a little tummy ache or oh i have like a tiny little headache like the way that she like worries and like cares about me and like shows that is so ugh. it's just so gentle and sweet and kind and i'm not used to that i'm not gonna lie like, one of the days she was here like we walked a lot and my feet were hurting and just automatically she's like let me massage your feet and i'm like this is new like i'm just not used to that like that type of care and it's just like oh like someone who matches my energy because i'm the same way like, oh the last question you get dinner with five people dead or alive who are you inviting so i'm inviting tommy obviously i'm inviting my grandma judy she passed away when i was 12 but she was my heart, my soul, my everything. She was my mom when my mom couldn't be my mom. I miss her so much and there's so much I wanna tell her and ask her and just, ugh, I'd give anything to do that. Billie Eilish, Brittany Murphy, last but not least, Drew Barrymore. Anyways, so those are the 33 questions and now that I have sat here and answered them all, I didn't realize how many of you ask questions about Tommy and how many of them I actually jotted down. Wow, this is almost 40 minutes. That's hectic. So I'm gonna need to edit this down a lot so you guys aren't sitting there listening to me ramble like nonsense. To be fair, that's just you all the time. But I hope that you guys did enjoy this and I'll see you in my next one. Bye. Well, enjoy is definitely not the word I would use to describe how I feel after watching that video. I would love to know what you guys thought about that whole mess um thank you so much for watching thumbs up this video if you liked it to be fair that's most of the time